Hello everyone and welcome to another episode in Let's Play Airline Sim where we are playing PNLL, the Polish, hopefully one day national airline. So what's new? Well quite a lot actually. Uh, when you look at our info page you will find out that we have 10 planes now. Uh, 9 of them being uh, Canada regional jets, uh, 7 of which is the 200 uh, series. Uh, one being the 700 series, which is a stretched version of the 200th, or maybe the 200th is a shortened version of the 700th, I'm not sure. But I know that the 900th is definitely the stretched version, either of 700 or the 900. However, we also have one uh, airplane, Bombardier CS Series 100, which I'm gonna speak about in a second. So what's up with these... Uh, Bombardiers. Well, uh, you will see that uh, our network has been gradually growing. We have been uh, servicing more and more airports and uh, the actual load factor on most of the airports were pretty good. So uh, I grabbed one uh, Bombardier Canada Regional Jet 900 and eventually one Canada Regional Jet 700. Uh, which is a bit more expensive, but can service uh, some airports where I'm not entirely sure that the 900 would suffice, uh, but they are too big for the 200. So what configurations are we using for these? Uh, well, the 200, if you guys know, uh, have 36 seats in the economy and 6 in a business class. Uh, the 700 has 56 seats in economy and 9 seats in business class, while the 900 has 60 seats in economy and 12 in business class. Uh, now, what is uh, the CS series? Well, uh, the Bombardier CS series uh, is a narrow body uh, middle hull aircraft that is on, I would say, the level of A318. It's slightly bigger uh, than the A300. Uh, 18, but slightly smaller than the A319, I believe. Let's put this theory to the test, shall we? Uh, yeah, 318 is actually bigger, so it's so it's um, pretty much the same as the A318. It's just probably a bit longer and a bit more narrow than the 318. Now, uh, why didn't I get the 318? Well, the baby Airbus, which uh, I really like to call the baby Airbus, uh, is not that good on a wide variety of routes. And as you can see, its performance is gradually decreasing. So this airplane is really made for uh, short to short middle haul flights. Well, this one has a much, I would say, longer range that decreases uh, slightly less. I think, that, yeah, the overall range of uh, the CS uh, series or C series 100, I keep mispronouncing it, it's C series uh, 100 is a bit better. And it's a brand new aircraft, so I wanted to test it out. And the routes that I uh, chose for this one is Moscow Sheremetyevo, where we traditionally had a huge amount of demand and Dubai. I spoke about Dubai before, uh, you guys definitely know it. Dubai is our only 10-bar airport that we are servicing right now and Moscow Sharmetyevo is a 9-bar airport. So uh, I have uh, done a bit of testing with this aircraft and I purchased, well purchased it, I leased it. We paid quite a lot of money for it. I think around 2 million were put down in leasing deposit and we're paying about 200,000. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what's the cash flow here. We're paying. Oh my god, dude. Okay, so we're paying, yeah, 195,000 for uh, the aircraft. So we put down a million nine hundred fifty thousand as a leasing deposit for, uh, oh, not this aircraft, this aircraft. Uh, its configuration is 75 seats in economy and 16 in business class, uh, which is not all that much, but I wanted uh, very nice seats in both classes. So I think that we have, uh, actually, actually maybe a bit of an overkill there. 
Uh, yeah, we're using usual Azure Plus, and we have the same in the Bombardier. Yeah, but uh, in the business we have uh, the recliner, uh, the Life Lad 140. So when you look at uh, the configuration, eh, well, I am so dumb today. Sorry, guys. Uh, it looks like this. So uh, it's it's actually pretty good. The rating is very high. I was especially especially interested in. Uh, the business class. I wanted to upgrade the seats in economy as well, but the game forced me not to. Uh, we're already losing, uh, using the Leisure Plus. You can see that we have 75 seats there. And if we changed it, um, it would change really drastically. Uh, oh, I can't change it now because I'm already using it. Uh, so let's do another one where I can show you uh, what I mean. So if we used economy uh, and we, instead of the leisure plus, use the comfort, you can see that if I top it up, we could only put 88 seats there. With uh, the business class, um, what did we use, the life flat? My friend 140 and we have, I believe, 16 seats. Yeah, uh, we could only use about 60 seats. So that seemed really like a huge change. And it is, you know, um, an upgrade in, in economy, but I was really worried about how well the aircraft would perform uh, with so little uh, seats. So I decided to go away with the Leisure Plus as well. Plus it's, you know, the people enjoy it and we're not flying um, that far away. However, this experiment so far uh, is crash and burning. I'm kind of afraid that we might really um, have to return the aircraft and do without. Because when you look at it, uh, the flights to Dubai have zero seats sold. Now, actually, these were a bit of a test. I, I misclicked, so we um, had to cancel them. But... Uh, these ones weren't and after an entire uh, round of um, I, I would say after a whole round of uh, demand calculation going on we only got about five seats which is terrifyingly low and that's yeah it's actually from a feeder too so there was no demand and look at that it was 18,215 airlines and dollars on each of the flights uh, this is the flight to Moscow, uh, and that one actually is starting to look pretty good, 2,942. Uh, we're earning about 7,000, how full is it? Yeah, 57. So so this aircraft uh, will be in profit once another few rounds going to go uh, for the Moscow flight. And I think it's going to be the same here. This one is way worse, yeah, but it's nothing tragic, and I think uh, overall the flight there and back come together would be a profit. But the flights to Dubai, definitely not. Uh, a part of that reason is uh, my logic behind it. I'm gonna show you what I mean. Uh, now let's look at the inventory. Now. I'm gonna show it here. It's gonna be a bit better. So uh, when you look at the previous flights, I uh, let the original flights fly at the default price, 285 Aronson dollars and 856 Aronson dollars, uh, counting on the fact that there were no uh, direct flights to Dubai. And we really ranked up pretty high in um, you know the direct flight, uh, but obviously for some reason there is absolutely no demand from Barsha to Dubai and back. I really don't know how that's possible. Uh, I I think uh, that's a bit of an error on the side of airlines and creators, but maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe there really is no of you know demand. Maybe all the passengers are connecting, so drastically reduce the price. I double check that we have the middle hall, which is a new uh, service profile uh, on board, and I'm gonna give it another round of tests. Uh, oh wait, that's. I should have put it to reverse uh, because I really want to keep this route. But you know, 200—that's that's about the minimum that we can go. If that doesn't fly, then I'll have to cancel the route and return the airplane and get a different aircraft to fly to Moscow because um, 
we can't really have this airplane if it doesn't fail. You know, there's a huge uh, amount of uh, aggressive competition here, and you know, this would drag us down. Plus, we are paying incredible amount for the aircraft, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, now let's look a bit at the, the facts and figures. Uh, last week, um, which was kind of funny, we flew only, uh, how many operated flights? 43 flights in the entire last week as I was adding new aircraft and we earned totally 222,240 dollars. Now considering that today is Wednesday, so only three days passed and we're already at, uh, 350,000, which is more than, uh, for the entire last week. I'm pretty happy. Uh, the load factor dropped a bit, which is unavoidable as we are adding more and more flights, but it's still in a pretty decent spot, I think. Uh, we're also increasing the revenue per passenger. Uh, revenue per flight is slightly smaller, but that's probably because uh, we have a number of smaller aircraft coming in. Uh, we offered a large number of seats. Uh, we filled quite a lot of them. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So where are we flying at this point? Well, uh, as you can see, the route map is pretty big and I'm still trying to hold on to the whole uh, east, south, west, east, south, west logic. So you will see that we have, uh, I'm going to show you the ones from Warsaw because the, that's uh, that's a bit more reasonable. Uh, we're flying three times per day to Belgrade. Uh, we're flying to Bergen. Uh, we're flying to Bordeaux. Uh, we're flying to Bremen. We're flying to Budapest, uh, to Burgas, to Catania, to Donetsk. This is a new... You can still see that a lot of uh, flights are not yet operated because I'm giving them a time to be booked. So again, next week will look way better. Yeah, it's pretty much half of our flights are not even flying yet. So again, count these numbers, you know, uh, as... as um, just an idea. We're not going to be profitable this week, but next week we might be, depending on how the whole Dubai shenanigans is gonna gonna work. So Donetsk, uh, Dubai, again that one is not flying it. Kaliningrad, uh, we're flying to London Gatwick and London Luton. Uh, we're flying to Lviv. We're flying to Minsk. Uh, that one has been recently upgraded, by the way. Uh, so was Gatwick. And so was, I'm pretty sure, Kaliningrad. No, Kaliningrad is still at, uh, and small. Weird. Anyway, uh, Minsk. Minsk was upgraded. Moscow. Yeah, Moscow has been upgraded twice to Canada Regional Jet 9. And then when I got, um, the C Series 1, I, uh, put it there. Uh, we're flying to Moscow of Nikovo. This was Sharamakeva and to Nikovo. Uh, we're flying to Odessa. We're flying to Paris. Uh, we're flying to Pisa, to Podgorica, to Prague. That one was, you know, upgraded as well because Prague is a huge surprise for me. We're flying to Rome, uh, to Airport Campino. We're flying to Rostau. We're flying to St. Petersburg, uh, Stavanger, to Stockholm, Arlanda, which was recently upgraded, to Tivat, and to Trondheim. Uh, if I was supposed to speak about each of the routes, uh, I'm, I, I think I'm gonna actually show you, uh, show you on the aircraft themselves so you have a bit of an idea. So pretty much all the flights at, uh, this aircraft are okay. Uh, Burgas is doing fine. So is Catania and so is Minsk. I think that we shuttled, yeah, we, uh, switched Minsk to a bit bigger aircraft. So now it has Donetsk instead and it's trying to you know starting to look pretty good you can see that uh, there are some bookings uh, nothing major but we still have a lot of time before uh, that route kicks in so i think we're gonna be in um, if not high yellow then the green numbers uh this uh canada regional jet well uh it's fine to uh pretty much a lot of uh places. Belgrade is okay. Luton is getting better, uh, but the return flight is always a bit of a bummer. And San Petersburg, again, uh, it started to increase slightly, even the flights to Petersburg. Uh, so uh, I'm hoping that it's going to get uh, only better. It's it's It has a slowly increasing tendency, and the return flights are always fully booked. So that is fine. Oh, we switched uh, something for Rostau. This is the morning flight, so where were you flying in the morning? Uh, to Petersburg. 
Okay, so I upgraded Petersburg to a bigger aircraft. Uh, oh yeah, because I, I uh, calculated that it's gonna be fine even if we don't sell uh, this route well. And we're gonna start flying to Rasta soon on this aircraft. So I'm hoping that one will work as well. Uh, this one flies to Prague, uh, but it won't anymore. Uh, Bergen, as you can see, Bergen is not really one of our most profitable routes, but I'm keeping it in, you know, it's better than nothing. And the numbers aren't all that terrible. And uh, to come in Ingrup, and instead of Prague, it's gonna fly where? It hasn't kicked in yet. So instead of Prague, we have, uh, what is it? Tivat. Okay, so this aircraft will be flying to Tivat. Um, then we have this aircraft. It's flying to Rome. Rome is starting to become a candidate for upgrade because uh, it's filling nicely. Uh, Trondheim and Stavanger, well, they're not terrible. You can see uh, here that Trondheim was not that bad. And Stavanger is actually doing way better. So I'm keeping them in, uh, hoping that they will get better so I can add more uh, daily flights. Uh, and it's flying to Moscow of Nikova. Again, the fight there, not so good, but the fight back, pretty decent. Uh, when you look at some of the older fights, yeah, you can see uh, it flies back full and flies there um, more than half full. Actually, almost three quarters full, so that's pretty good. Uh, this one is flying to Belgrade. Uh, yeah, it was flying to Algier. I actually contacted the person from Algier. We had a negotiation um, going and we decided to keep the underlining but cancel the direct flight to Algier. So instead of Algier, it is now flying um, to what, Belgrade, Odessa and Podgorica. Is that it? That's a weird combination. Oh yeah, it's flying the overnight flight to Belgrade, the third one. I'm testing that. And it's flying to uh, Podgorica and Odessa. I'm hoping Podgorica is... Podgorica, both Podgorica and Tivat are fairly uh, neglected airports. So I'm hoping that we could get some decent numbers there. Yeah, it's starting to look pretty good. When you look at them, they have almost no connections. So I'm hoping that's going to be a, you know, a blast for us later on. Uh, granted, they're not big, but you know, they're the only two airports in Montenegro and neither of them have uh, any decent connections. So, you know, let's, you know, let my hopes fly high. Uh, this one is, that's the first uh, 900 series that we got. It's fine to Stockholm and Stockholm is a blast. We're making a ton of money there. So I'm really happy. Uh, this one isn't even full and it gives us uh, 200 bucks in profit and this one is full and it's giving us just 360 really wait I thought we were doing you know making a lot on that I'll have to jerk up the oh it didn't have the business class fully so long I'll have to jerk up the prices anyway uh, Gatwick completely full I'm thinking about adding another flight yeah this one is doing us uh, nice numbers too so that's fine. And Moscow Sheremetyevo, where it was flying, was recently switched to Minsk because we put uh, the Sheremetyevo on the C series. Oh yeah, I remember. I was looking at this aircraft uh, because most of the passengers here are connecting, so I didn't want to increase the prices. Uh, you know, because really, you no, know, these are all from external to external, but. Uh, yeah, to your own connection. I don't want to, you know, lose these connecting passengers. So these bigger airports are important for us uh, mainly because we want uh, to have good connections set up. So uh, the 200th, um, that's one of the new ones. It's going to fly to Lviv, uh, Budapest and Bremen. Bremen, pretty much a bummer, but I'm not going to cancel it. It's, you know, it's, it's not terrible. You know, it's it's just a bit of a loss. It's gonna in dramatically increase once a few more rounds gonna go around. So I'm gonna keep it. And um, yeah, there's some connection. So I'm giving it some more time. It's uh, eighth, so we'll have two more demand calculation going on. Uh, but Lviv and uh, Budapest, pretty good numbers. Look at that. And they're gonna have another round of demand calculation going on. Actually, these ones are running on loss. So I'll have to increase the prices. Yeah, same here. Um, well, 
We know it works, so we'll just have to tweak the prices. <laughs> What a business model. Yeah, I spoke about the C-Series already. Uh, Moscow looking pretty good. Dubai, terrible. We'll see what's going to come up of that. Um, this is another 200 flying to Bordeaux. Uh, not all that bad. You know, I remember it being much worse. This is after one day of worth of calculation. So it's going to get uh, probably completely full. Uh, Belgrade, again, that's our uh, important, you know, place. And Pisa, well, we'll see about Pisa. Uh, there's quite a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people flying there. I don't know how many people will fly back, so we'll see. But overall, a pleasant surprise. And the last, uh, the 700th, is going to fly to Petersburg. And I shuttled Petersburg, Prague, and Paris early there. So we'll see. We'll see how those work. So overall... Uh, the network is growing. Uh, we're doing sort of good. I need to add more uh, more destinations pretty much everywhere, but I'm running out of places on the east. You know, there's not that many interesting destinations where I would like to fly. Like in Belarus, the only one is Minsk. In Russia, we're already flying to Petersburg, uh, both airport, well, two out of three airports in Moscow, and um, then we're flying to Rostov. I'm thinking about adding a couple more uh, places in Russia, but I'm not entirely sure because they're getting quite small. Uh, yeah, this is this is all all in. There was um, I think we were thinking about Volgograd, but yeah, Krasnodar could be, Sochi could be, uh, Volgograd could be, but these are all pretty much connected uh, by you know. A lot of connections so I don't want to really get into that we might we might lose the battle uh, in Ukraine I'm flying to pretty much all I think is there any other place in Ukraine that we're oh Simferopol okay so we still have one place to fly oh and near to Petrovsk as well okay so there are two more airports in Ukraine that we could uh, service in um, Germany, there's a lot of places. Dresden, Dortmund, Niederheim, uh, Leipzig. I'm thinking about Leipzig first. Uh, we also have Yerevan here prepared. I'd like to start flying to Vienna, but we would need a bigger aircraft for that. Uh, I was thinking about adding um, Aurel Viaku International Airport. Uh, but, you know, these are all just scraps. Really, those are, we are covering all our target airports. We could fly to many places in the UK. We could fly to many places in, uh, you know, Western Europe, generally speaking, Germany. We could start flying to Spain, but uh, I want it as a land bridge, you know. So I was kind of thinking that uh, I might start adding some um, things to mix it up because we're always flying to east, south, west. So we could start flying uh, south, uh, west, south, east, west, so that we'll have more connections, especially for the airports that are working, you know, like, um, like Minsk, we could add, uh, an afternoon flight so that we would have a connection from Minsk to Western Europe. And same with some, you know, the southern, uh, southern airports that are working, we could have a west, east connection going on, but, uh, we'll see how that goes, you know. I'll need some airports that definitely will work before I start getting into that. Plus, there are not that many good aircraft on the market. So generally speaking, I'm going to wait for the C-Series uh, results. And then I'm either going to return it or uh, sanction it to remain. And uh, then we're going to keep growing our connections. So yeah, that was an update on Airline Sim. Everything is looking good. Hope it's looking good for you as well. And uh, I'll see you guys next time with another update.